maintaining a grip in some very precarious places. He was downwardly mobile. That's in a couple of moments from now. Money. They say it's evil stuff. But you can save a devil of a lot in the pound stretcher's sale. With huge reductions in all departments, like CDs for only $1.99. It's a hell of a sale! Pound stretcher sale. Now. soft just isn't soft enough so andrex have made something totally different gold cushion soft the very thickest softest toilet tissue we've ever made shopping can be fun for the children and for the rest of the family too who make shopping this easy dickens make it easy Spinning the wheel this Monday. You've just got into acting school, haven't you? Yes, I have. That is a dangerous time. It is a very dangerous one. Who's your favourite baby, Barry, Morris, or Robin? Well, definitely Barry. One thousand. That's the target when you spend to win the superb cash jackpot of ten thousand pounds and this tremendous car. But it won't be easy. Find out how they fare in the all-new Wheel of Fortune Monday at eight on ITV. Back to tonight, to end at half an hour's time at nine o'clock, the second of our drama about passion and murder, one entitled When Love Kills. That's at nine later tonight at 11.30, Prisoner, Cell Block H. But now, it's time for comedy. espresso machine. <laughs> It is a suit, isn't it? Never said anything about a 1930s nostalgia party. <laughs> what date is it today, Mark? Um, hang on. April 22nd. <laughs> April the 22nd. Does that mean anything to you, Mark? Nope. Should it? Yes. April the 22nd. Oh, is it May Day? <laughs> <laughs> April the 22nd. Something to do with Mother? Mother? You remember Mother? Nice old lady with grey hair. <laughs> Lived in the big bedroom at the top of the stairs. <laughs> Tried to bring you up. <laughs> Look, this is exactly the same order as last year. Menu for three. And vodka has always been included in the price. <laughs> well, it's hard times for everyone, not just caterers. Good, thank you. And don't stint on the borscht. Yes, does <laughs> What's happening today? The Oxfam Roadshow? <laughs> I'm cooking a special meal. How would you like to make yourself useful? A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Do I get to eat? No. <laughs> Come on. April 22nd. April the 22nd. And you wear a suit for this. <laughs> well, I don't know. Give up. It's the anniversary of Mother's death. Oh. <laughs> so? So, I'm going to lay flowers on her grave. 
as I do every year. All oh, right. Well, I think I ought to come with you. You are not coming. Why not? After all, I was her favourite son. <laughs> It's to boil water in. What's wrong with the kettle? Normally, nothing. But I don't want Aunt Lud Miller banging the table with her silver cane, demanding to see the management. There. Who is this Aunt Lud Miller? And how come she rates a tablecloth? And why is she coming round to drink boiling water? <laughs> oh, that's nasty. <laughs> it's a Russian samovar. Aunt Ludmilla gave it to Clem years ago. Mark's never said anything about an Aunt Ludmilla. I don't think old people are quite his thing. <laughs> Looks very grand, this meal you're making. Yes. For three? <laughs> it's an annual ritual. Be nice to Clem's oldest living relative. You know, smiling, things like that. I'm not sure you would too. <laughs> this is an antique. Must be worth a bit. Have you ever thought of getting... No. I haven't had it valued. <laughs> Don't you have a grave to go to? <laughs> How come she's got a Russian name? Because she was born in Russia. <laughs> they do things like that in Russia. Give their children Russian names. <laughs> They're strange people, Russians. This aren't Ludo person. Does she have any more samovars? <laughs> Couldn't lend us 30 quid, could you? <laughs> you know, Clem, there's hardly a day passes when I don't think about her about what she meant to me. It's this way. Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> what would you like me to do first? Go out. <laughs> Sophie, I only have food for three. Well, that's all right. Mark will just nibble. <laughs> now, what's on the menu? I can only cook when there's no one else in the room. Why? Do you take your clothes off? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no. Sorry? An hour late. You'll be delivering what an hour late? A home banquet for three. <laughs> Who are you? Cossack Catering Company. <laughs> oh, the week I have been right. dreaming of your cooking, Rosemary. Uh, Sophie, uh, Aunt Luke Miller. Aunt Luke Miller, Sophie. Are you the wife? Yes. <laughs> this home banquet for three. Could you make it for five, please? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, God. I wish she'd learned to tell the time in English. She's an hour early. Immediately demands a lemon tea. The samovar isn't even lit yet. In a glass with two sugars. Expects lunch to be on the table. Says she could eat a horse. Would that be a Cossack horse? <laughs> because I'm afraid it's running an hour late. Never mind. I'll just nip through and tell Auntie there's been a bit of a glitch with the catering. Oh, no, don't do that. Auntie thinks I'm the best Russian cook this side of the Urals. <laughs> not been deceiving the old lady. <gasps> Rosemary. Cooking an annual feast for Auntie is a family tradition started by Clem's mother in the 60s, and then she died, and... And, and she's been conning poor auntie ever since. No. Yes. <laughs> I really miss her. Yep. She'll be 84 now. 83, actually. <laughs> right. I wish Dad had a grave. It's so sad to think of him lying at the bottom of the sea somewhere. Do you know what I mean, Clem? Well, that's a long time ago now. The day after my fifth birthday. Remember? Best of luck, Mark. <laughs> no, 
Not very impressive, this gravestone, is it? Should have gone for marble. Oh, absolutely. Should have been an 80-foot-high obelisk <laughs> with a name in neon lights, with hidden loudspeakers playing Al Jolson singing Mammy. <laughs> He's talking about respect for one's mother. Oh, what did you read about that then? Esquire magazine? <laughs> I loved her too, you know. I see. Just didn't stretch to home visit, eh? Well, she knew I was a very busy man. How? When he went ex-directory, he didn't give me a phone number. <laughs> Don't worry, she had you sussed. Yes, as a success. She wanted one son to be a success. That's why she looked up to me. She looked up to everybody. She was only five foot two. <laughs> I won her respect. <laughs> me, the son of a removal man, walking the floors of the world's biggest currency dealers, billion quid a day through my terminals. She didn't care about your terminals. What mattered to her was having somebody who'd nip down to the shops to fetch her milk and eggs. Big deal. It's called putting other people first. Oh, let me vomit. She wanted a son who would do his duty. She wanted a son who'd achieve something. That's why I was her favorite. Bollocks! <laughs> she told me herself. You are such a liar. I am not. You were paid 80,000 a year to be a liar. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it meant allowing the border guards to sleep with me. <laughs> yes, yes it would. <laughs> I can still see the headlines in your times. Russian actress defects. Mm, my darling, I was co-celebre. But only Clem's mother was truly kind to me. Cousin Ludmilla, she said, what an honor to have great Russian artists under our eaves. <laughs> and Clem and little Marky had stars in their eyes for their new auntie. My only tragedy, I had to leave behind my chandeliers. <laughs> but my jewels, my tiaras, my diamonds, these I smuggle out 100%. It's funny. I've only just met you, but I already feel incredibly close. <laughs> it is a very small room. <laughs> Why we are squished in here? Oh, it's, um, it's more comfortable. It gets incredibly hot in the kitchen with all that cooking. What happened to the jewels? Oh, the cooking, my blinis. Blinis with the sour cream. Every year, Rosemary is making them for me. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love Russian culture so much, don't you? Especially those funny little dolls that fit inside each other. <laughs> I'm so sorry to keep you cooped up in here, but it's, um, terribly cold in the kitchen. Despite the cooking. <laughs> yes. The lunch soon is ready. Definitely, lunch soon is ready. Um, quite soon. Rosemary is a wonderful cook. Oh, yes, I know. I must just baste. Baste. <laughs> Mark's told me so much about you. He worships the ground you walk on. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> what a lovely ruby ring, Auntie. <laughs> Hello, Auntie. I brought you some flowers. <laughs> Little Marky, after all these years, and now you are loud noise in big business. <laughs> Not anymore, Auntie. We're rather poor, actually. <laughs> so, today, you and your big brother have visited the grave of your mamushka. Right. Ace experience. Deeply moving. <laughs> I hope you did not also visit the grave of your father. What? <laughs> that wicked man. He does not deserve his grave should be visited. I uh, think you've got that one a bit muddled, Auntie. <laughs> Hello, Auntie. I brought you some flowers. <laughs> you see, our dad was drowned in the Solent when I was five. 
They never found his body. Your flowers. <laughs> My dear boy, your father. Time for lunch. <laughs> your father only died four years ago. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He is buried. Not drunk. Not done. Buried. Yeah. In the same great grave. That's what I'm Will you bloody stop the whirling? Clem, is this true? Um, I'll, I'll go and help with the cooking. <laughs> Summer's just about here, but don't panic. If you get on the Slim Fast plan today, you could lose 10 pounds in a month. The plan's easy. The calories have been counted, the fat grams have been computed. You don't even have to think about nutrition. It's all in there. A shake for breakfast, one for lunch, a sensible dinner, even bars of snacks. So start today. By the time the weather heats up, you could look really hot. Slim Fast, come on, start today. You could lose 10 pounds in a month. If things aren't taking off as planned... Milky Milky Way! They magically whipped light and fluffy new centre, surrounded in delicious milk chocolate. Milky Way! So light it's magic any time! <laughs> the magic's in the Milky Way! What's Auntie on about in there? Oh, she's just hungry. <laughs> what did she mean about father? Listen, Mark, sometimes she thinks she's the last of the Romanovs. She's hardly going to get it right about father, is she? <laughs> Sounded very clear to me. Tell me again how he died. Well, you know already. He was drowned one dark winter's night after falling off the Isle of Wight ferry. <laughs> Go on. On? Yes. Well, apparently he was leaning over the rail, feeding the seagulls. You do not feed seagulls at night. Dusk, dusk, dusk. <laughs> and he fell over this rail. Yeah. Low rail, was it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Very low rails on the Isle of Wight Ferry. And... Uh, <laughs> nice. And all this happened when I was five, right? Yep. And the body was never found. <laughs> I'm afraid not, no. You see, his pockets were full of stones. <laughs> he loved collecting stones from the beach for us. Very big stones. <laughs> Poor father. This isn't very convincing, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, it may be on its way, but when's it going to arrive? What? She's shouting at me in Russian. What shall I do? Who are you phoning? The bloody Cossack Catering Company. <laughs> Don't let her escape. Get back in there. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Ow. Just tell me the truth. You're very big on truth. Try telling me some. Here, let me do that, Rosemary. <laughs> oh, good. You've decided to join us. Father only died four years ago, didn't he? Aunt Ludmilla is not mad. He isn't at the bottom of the sea at all. He's buried less than half a mile from here, right? I've had 20 years of lies, haven't I, Mr. Honesty? Yes. 23, to be exact. <laughs> She's turning ugly. The old bat wants feeding. Here. Well, I don't see her going for these, unless they're caviar flavoured. <laughs> she ever said anything to you about jewels? Oh. <laughs> yes. Well, you see, when you were five, our dad, well, he... The thing is, Mum didn't want to tell you. She thought you were too young to be told. <laughs> to be told what? <laughs> Tomorrow, I'll give the pair of you some catapults and some water pistols. But right now, I want you, Clem, to manage some small gesture of hospitality towards your ravenous auntie in the other room. Yes, you're quite right, Rosemary. I was being very selfish. <laughs> 
Don't give it to me. <laughs> Too young to be told what? That father had abandoned us and run off with a barmaid. <laughs> a barmaid? They went to live on the Isle of Wight together. So there was a bit of truth in it. He was on the Isle of Wight ferry. <laughs> Presumably. Only he never fell off it. We'd planned to tell you on your 16th birthday. Well, why didn't you? Well, that was the day you decided to pawn Mother's gold watch. <laughs> to buy 300 shares in Rio Tinto Zinc. <laughs> I think she was a little bit put out by that. <laughs> we just wanted to protect you, Mark. But why a barmaid? Well, why Sophie? <laughs> it's interesting you should say that, Auntie, because I've always been fascinated by icons. <laughs> ever since I was a child. It is through my icons that I find the way to God. The beautiful leads to the eternal. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Could I come round and see these icons sometime? No. Looking for the cavalry, Rosemary? <laughs> How about next Tuesday? Yes, why are you staring into the space? I'm not. Have another crisp, Auntie. I would rather eat dead dog. <laughs> I would like a chilled vodka. Chilled vodka? Ah, uh, the chilled vodka still... Chilling. <laughs> then I will take a bowl of Bosch. Right. It's still heating. <laughs> you permit that I nibble on a pickled mushroom? No, not yet. You see, um... Uh, they're still pickling. <laughs> well, at least take the blasted flowers away. <laughs> you were my big brother. I looked up to you. And what did you do? You lied to me about my own father. For more than 20 years, you had me believing he died falling off the Isle of Wight ferry. You always told me your father fell off his private yacht. <laughs> when it was sliced in two by the Isle of Wight ferry. Stay out of this, Sophie. It's what you always told me. I didn't know about the private yacht, Mark. Tell me about the private yacht. Well, I couldn't go around telling people my father fell off a ferry. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Why the hell should I apologise to you anyhow after the way you've behaved? You were only five at the time. I was trying to give you a positive image of your father. It's not very positive, falling off the Isle of Wight ferry. <laughs> Where are my bloody beanies? <laughs> Come take a bite out of Sophie. <laughs> I feel awful about the whole business. I really do. It's OK. I'm sorry. I'm honestly very sorry. Your motives were good. I know that. Come here. <laughs> I will never lie to you again. And I won't charge you for the jacket. <laughs> Sick of being cooked in that little room. Shoot, what's me? Get coy, Brooklyn, out of Jurak. What at that? Cielo, Simoyan, Samovarum. Good point, Auntie. More crisps? A samovar is not for boiling roses. I give to you a precious heirloom, and this is how I am treated. I'm out of the loop on this one, Auntie. It belongs to Clem. It is belonging to you both. When your father ran off with the Trollope barmaid, <laughs> I am cheering you boys up with the gift of my precious samovar. You never told me that. <laughs> didn't I? No, you didn't. You always said it was yours. You'd have only wanted to sell it. I was only five. Rosemary, your Clem is a liar and a... Where is the lunch? Oh! Ah! Uh, Auntie Lou! <laughs> Bosch! Early Bosch! <laughs> Extra Bosch! <laughs> Bosch! What about my share? 
I want my share. All right, you can drink tea out of it. Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. <laughs> Shut up! And take the flowers out of my samovar. Well, I didn't put them in. Who did then? Sophie! Okay. <laughs> oh, this Sophie. She is the complete bitch. <laughs> Tuesday looks fine, Auntie. Shall we say about two o'clock? Maybe I could persuade someone from Sotheby's to come. My dear, I survived, Stalin. I am seeing through your little game. You think to strip old lady naked and pinch her best bits. <laughs> wow. Tough cheese, baby. <laughs> I hope your wheels fall off. <laughs> and you, Clem, you are just as bad. You are lying to your own brother. Right on, Auntie. My view, exactly. And you're a liar to everybody. You're both the same. Is there no one in this family capable of a little old-fashioned honesty? <laughs> Can we please eat now? <laughs> ah. But where is the food? Yes, where is the food, Rosemary? It's, um, it's... The um, food's arrived. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, good. Catering. <laughs> Diamondly mobile, Mark and Sophie fall out, much to Clem's delight. When you see the mess those two have got themselves into, I mean, you and I, we can sleep nights with a clear conscience. Well, maybe not that clear. Who's this? I've had an offer of a weekend. Long and dirty and foreign. <laughs> Rosemary is tempted by a romantic offer in Diamondly mobile, next Thursday at 8.30 on ITV. Oh, good, you're dead. <laughs> Whatever it is. I'm not in any trouble. It's a hard thing to face when love kills. See it after the break in a few moments from now. Three minutes. Chocolate before the performance? No, Maltesers. They're lighter than ordinary chocolates. Are you sure? Mmm. Maltesers are made of millions of crisp tiny bubbles, captured in delicious chocolate, so they don't fill you up. The theater's full. But I am not. Maltesers, the lighter way to enjoy chocolate. Can a photo really be this good? Fuji Color Super G. The grains are finer, the pictures are sharper. Fuji Color Super G. So real, it's unreal. Rising up with the eyes of Tiger. Nice try. First break, Tony. You got it. Hey, it's playing for the court. You're on. When you've had a great game, there's nothing like the great taste of Frosties as part of your nutritious breakfast. Kellogg's Frosties. They're great! Simply wearing and washing can take the life out of your clothes. The fibres in them get damaged, so they look like this under a microscope. Now there's a new concentrated comfort. Comfort Ultra Care. With regular use, it protects cotton fibres like the former Wearmouth Colliery. 
The car makers say they're delighted that the spotlight is shifting away from land they're earmarked for